you brought your Bibles with you, you can open them with me to the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, and if you can manage two places, all right, turn to Matthew 28 and then Romans chapter 10 as well. Matthew chapter, Matthew, y'all pray, I told you to pray for me. Caught the Holy Ghost for half a second. Matthew chapter 28 and Romans chapter 10, and of course on this uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, we are celebrating what Jesus has done for us, right? That he was crucified on a cross and he was buried, but that he rose again on the third day alive forevermore. And certainly all the believers, all the Christians in the room, we ought to celebrate this, not just on Easter Sunday, but really every day of our life. Can I have a good amen right there too? For sure, we ought to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1, I'm going to read a few verses to you. It says, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Jesus is not here because he has been raised from the dead. Can I have a good amen one more time before we jump into this? His resurrection, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not just a, a religious belief, it is actually a, a, a historical, historical fact. In fact, if you study scripture, you'll find that it numbers 526 witnesses of the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. 526 people. Actually, scripture would go on to say that Jesus proved who he was and that he was alive and raised from the dead for 40, 40 days with many infallible proofs, right? So there's there's concrete evidence that our Jesus is a risen Jesus. Let me put it to you this way. If there were three of you who said that you saw me at the car wash yesterday, that'd be enough evidence to convict me as being at the car wash yesterday, right? So we're talking about 526 different people. We're talking about solid ground to stand on that we serve a risen Savior, a risen Lord. Billy Graham said it this way. He said, the resurrection is the chief proof of the Christian faith. The resurrection is the chief proof of the Christian faith. And another man by the name of Charles W. Colson, I came across this, and I believe, you'll, I believe you'll like it. He was a special counsel to President Richard Nixon in 1969 and 1970. He said it this way. I know you'll enjoy it. He said, I know the resurrection is a fact, and Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified that they had seen Jesus raised from the dead. Then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Everyone was beaten, tortured, stoned, and put in prison, and they would not have endured that if it weren't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep alive for three weeks. You're telling me 12 apostles could keep alive for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. So we're not here just worshiping or celebrating some empty truth. We're worshiping and celebrating a risen Lord and knowing that there's an empty tomb. Come on, y'all. Amen. So what does that mean for you and me in 2019? Something that happened 2,000 years ago. How does that affect us right here, right now? I mean, a lot, has, a lot has happened between then and now. A lot of time has passed. A lot of things have happened. But what does this truth of who Jesus is and what he's done for humanity, what does that speak to us today, right here in 2019 on April 21st? Well, in Romans 10 and verse 9 and verse 10, if you turn there, you can look there now. It says this. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. One translation says you will experience salvation. You see that word saved right there and the word salvation come from the same Greek word. And I know you didn't come here to learn Greek, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. And it's the word sozo. Can everybody say sozo? 
and it's spelled just like it sounds, S-O-Z-O, and that, that's the word that's translated saved, and then later salvation, and it means this, safety, protection, deliverance, healing, preservation, saved and salvation, of course, wholeness, and to do well or to be made well. So he says here that when you believe in your heart and really just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he says when you believe that he has been risen from the dead, right, you're not just acknowledging a historical fact, but when you call on him as Lord, it makes a difference in your life. You could say it this way, salvation comes to your house. And this salvation means more than just, hey, one day I get to go to heaven. And by the way, that's good news, right? It means more than just, yeah, I got my ticket to heaven and I'm going to escape hell. And that is fantastic news. But literally he's saying salvation is yours now. Safety and healing and preservation and soundness. And there's a restoration of what was lost. And there's a new you, a new creation that is now in Christ Jesus. You have been saved. You have been born again or made new in Christ Jesus. Let me just let you know, there is no greater news than this news. This is the best news in all of the universe for all time. Scripture would go on to say that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Same word again. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know it's simple and almost seems like overly simple, but basically he's saying no matter who you are, no matter your background, no matter your culture, no matter your race, no matter what language you speak or what continent you live on, whoever you are, if you'll call on the name of the Lord, believing in your heart that he's a son of God, that he went to the cross for you and that he rose again and he is risen from the dead, he says salvation changes your life from the inside out from that moment forward. You are saved, praise God. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be, shall be saved, shall be saved. Amen. I know sometimes people maybe ask this question when you preach a message like this or they hear something like this, they kind of think, well, uh, saved from what, preacher? What do I need to be saved from? I mean, am I really that bad? I mean, I, I, need, I need a savior. I need to be saved. I mean, what's up with that? Is that just, you know, preacher talk, church talk, religious talk? Or what, what, what is that all about? Well, there's probably a long list that I could give you of the things that you need to be saved from, but probably at the heart of all of it is this. You need to be saved from your sin. Sin. Sin is basically meaning that you, you're not perfect. You, you've made a mistake here or there right? You've, you've missed the mark of perfection, right? Actually, Scripture says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I know this is basic. I know this is simple, but this is hardcore truth right here. Everyone's missed it. Everyone's, everyone's fallen short, right? In fact, I could do a quick survey right here, and I know I may not get a whole lot of particip- uh, participation, but I'll do my best. Anybody in here ever, ever lied? Wow, y'all are bad people. I can't believe you came to church on Easter Sunday. That's... Anybody ever cheated? Anybody ever? Is any, any of you liars out there just lied about cheating? Come on, let's be honest. Anybody ever stolen anything? Come on, anybody, raise your hand. Have you ever stolen anything? If you're sitting next to somebody that raised their hand, you just kind of slide your purse a little bit further under your seat. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to leave my iPad alone by itself after service for sure. Right? I mean, basically, if you get right down to the heart of it, yeah, we've certainly all missed it. We've all... We've all made mistakes. I can remember even when I was when I was a kid. Now, me and my sister, who's here today, great to have you here, and my brother-in-law, awesome. Uh, anyway, we grew up in a motorhome because my parents were evangelists. We traveled around the country for 50 weeks out of the year in a motorhome. We were homeschooled, all of this, and so uh, we stopped all kinds of places. And and uh, my parents made it feel like it was a fantastic field trip, 24/7. Um, but I can remember one time. We pulled into, I believe it was a grocery store in the motorhome, and, and, and we, all, we got out, and we are going to go in, and I walked past this candy bin in the grocery store. I walked this, past this candy bin, and the, the candy started calling my name. Anybody ever had the candy call your name? Anybody ever had Cinnabon call your name? 
Okay, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? So I walk, I walk by the candy bin, and it's like calling my name, my name like, you want me? You want to eat me? This, I'm yours, and I'm walking by it. And, and so I, we're in the store for a little bit, and I walk back by it again, and I figured, you know, nobody's looking. No one's really paying attention. Nobody's watching. Dad's in front of me. And, you know, so I grabbed a piece of candy, and I put it in my pocket. Walked out of the store. Didn't pay for it. Didn't tell my parents about it. We got all the way to the motorhome, and apparently it had the look of a guilty sinner all over my face. I was trying to hold tight, trying to act like nothing happened. I was trying to pretend, pretend I was the hardened criminal that I was. Dad said, what'd you do? I'm like, what, what do you mean what I'm doing? Obviously, I'm pretty terrible at lying. So he's like, you, you, got, you did something you shouldn't have done. You know, you look like you messed your britches, Aaron. What, what, why do you have that look on your face? What, Dad? What, Dad? He goes, and then finally got it out of me. I had, Dad, I took a piece of candy. He said, all right, you need to repent to God and you need to bring the candy back in the store. Oh, sweet Jesus, right? But we've all had moments like that in our life, and maybe, maybe not just when you were a child, but maybe in your 20s, maybe in your 30s, maybe in your 40s, maybe in your 50s, you've had moments where you've done things that you knew you shouldn't have done, and it wasn't right, not just before other people, it wasn't right before God, and you've got this guilty conscience, this condemnation, and I want you to know that God has made a way for you to live free from your sin. God knew that people were going to miss it. He knew humanity was going to miss it. He knew Adam was going to sin in the garden. He knew that people were going to fall into this, and it was going to be a big mess, but he had a plan of redemption for humanity, and that's why he sent his son, Jesus, born of a virgin Mary, lived holy, spotless, pure, perfect, never sinned, not even once. And at the age of 30, he's anointed by the Spirit of God, and he goes about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. He's raising the dead, making the blind to see, the lame to walk, speaking truth. I mean, walking in authority and power, but at the age of 33, he is betrayed and he's beaten. It's a crown of thorns on his head and he goes to the cross for us. Jarrell, would you help me? He goes to the cross for us and I, I wanna do my best to illustrate this so you remember this Easter Sunday and, and this message. Jesus went to the cross for you and for me and for all of humanity. You know, if we were to take a moment, and I certainly don't wanna relive all the mistakes of my past, but if, if we were to take a few minutes to kinda tally up everybody's sin in the room, it might get real ugly real fast, wouldn't it? If we were to just take one section over here, it'd be like, man, by the time it's all over, like, my goodness, wow, we're a mess. But if we added up every section in the room, you'd find out real quickly, whoo, man, we are not perfect people. But what if you took all the sin of not just the people in this room, but everyone in Alexandria, just our city? But what if you added Pineville to it? What if you added the state of Louisiana, what if you added just the United States of America, all the sin and all the mess of one country? What if, what if you added all of North America and every continent all around the world at, at one time, nearly seven billion people, all the mess and all the sin of humanity, but what if you took all of that sin of all the people for all time and you added all of that up? What, what a pile of mess that would be, right? But yet ultimately... In our lives, we realize that what Jesus did, not only did he do it for the whole world, but he did it for the one. And that one is me. So if we, we boil this down to, yeah, let's flip it on this other side, please. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give Drell a big hand. He did a great job. Looking pretty fresh today, too. He's got like, what is this? What is this? This is like some fantastic print and red Levi's shoes. He's what a great man. So there's, there's a lot of things that he went to the cross for as far as if you kind of, you know, got specific with some things. But, but bottom line, and, you know, you can applaud my artistic ability in just a second. It's, it boils down to just one word. And that word is Sin right? Actually, Scripture says that he was made to be sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus went to the cross and took our sin upon him, 
all the mistakes that I made, the time I sold a candy in the candy store, right, at the grocery store, the time I, I lied you know, to my parents that I was somewhere that I really wasn't, you know? All the little things and the things that we kind of think are big and some things we think are small, doesn't really matter, just kind of adds up and realize we're just a mess without Jesus. And so Jesus went to the cross to take my sin, and because he came to take my sin, I'm going to sign my name and signify that what Jesus did, he did for Aaron Hankins. He, he did that. He did that for me, but, you know, he, he, didn't just, he didn't just do it for Aaron Hankins. He, he, did, it, he did it for Derek, too. Would you, would you come up here and sign your name, Derek? Because we know Derek's a big-time sinner, and he really, <laughs> he really needs to sign his name to this, this cross. He, he's missed it, right? But, but Jesus saw that before you ever showed up on this planet. He saw that, right? And so he died for Aaron Hankins, and he, he died for Derek, too. But it's, it's not just Aaron and Derek. It's, it's for Aaliyah, too. Would, would you come up, Aaliyah? Because, right, he, he died for the, the sin of Aaliyah, but, but not, not only Aaliyah. He died for the sin of my father-in-law, Joel. Come up here, Joel, because we know you need the grace of God as well. <laughs> Love you, Joel. Amen. He, he died for the sin, of, but, not on, but not only Joel is, is, is Kenitha. Would you, would you mind coming up, Kenitha, too? Right, because he died for your sin, but, but not, only, um, not, on, not only this crew right here, but really, really everybody in the room. Actually, Scripture says all, all have sinned, so all of our sin. And I'd like for you this morning, if you say, you know what, I'd like, I want to sign my name to that cross. I'd like for you to join. Come on, anybody want to come up here and say, you know what? I'm going to put my name on there and realize that the grace of God is sufficient for me. Yeah, right in the middle of service. I know on an Easter Sunday, this is kind of rolling the dice a little bit because you never know who, who's going to come up here and what they're going to try to do. Don't touch my computer. Because um, <laughs> some of y'all are, are, are liars and thieves, so just be careful with that. All right? Right, but you can sign your name and realize that that where sin abounded, and when you realize all the co-signers of their sin are on this cross, you realize that where sin abounded, and it really does abound, Scripture says in, in the book of Romans that where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So no matter, no matter how much sin is on, and if we took this cross and we traveled all around the country and had everybody sign it till the whole cross was blacked out, right? Jesus' blood, oh... Jesus' blood is still more than enough for my sin. Actually, we sang it this morning. What can wash away my sin? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? What can preserve me? What can keep me? What can keep me safe? What can make me righteous? What can make me holy? Not my own works, not my own obedience, not my own, right? Because if, if, if it was that, then, then we'd be good enough to earn salvation. But look, at the end of your life, you better know that, that it's more than just your good outweighing your bad that has brought life into your life. Hallelujah. It is a Savior who has taken your sin upon him on the cross of Calvary some 2,000 years ago, and he made a way for you. Whoo, hallelujah. He made a way for you where there was no way. Because sin says, Amy, you're not worthy of this moment. What's your name, brother? Sin says, Matt, you ain't worthy of this. Adam, you aren't worthy of this. What's your name, brother? Dennis, Dennis, you're not worthy. You can't, you know, you can't come up on a stage. You can't come to church on Easter Sunday and act like you love Jesus. We know what you did three weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's your name? Sade. Sade. Awesome. Right? right? Sade. She should have been in the dance a few minutes ago, right? I don't know. Right? And so you kind of can go down the list and you realize very quickly that I, I fall not just a little bit short. Like, I'm not even close. I'm not even hitting the target at all. I'm not, I'm, not there, I'm not there at all, but by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle, Paul, the Apostle Paul said this. He said, by his grace, I stand. 
And some of you are here on this Easter Sunday morning, and you realize very readily that it's by the grace of God that I can walk into a room like this and experience the greatness of the presence of an almighty God and a loving Savior and the power of the Holy Spirit and stand to tell the story on the other side of it. Hallelujah. Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, Passion Week, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not about how good humanity is, but it's about how great our God is. It's about how wonderful redemption is. It's about how powerful the blood of Jesus is. There is a great God who loves you, who has a plan for you, who's made a way for you, and no matter how far you feel away, no matter how much you messed up, No matter how much you look like you messed your britches. <laughs> Sorry to bring that up on Easter Sunday, y'all. You couldn't earn it anyway. You couldn't deserve it anyway. You couldn't pay for it anyway. You know what your sin deserves? Sin deserves separation from God, right? For the wages of sin, Scripture says, is death, but it's talking about more than just like dying in your body. It's talking about this spiritual separation where there's no connection with God, the one who created you. And realizing that that need for a Savior is about more than just having a good life in central Louisiana, 2019. It's about realizing that this, this life is just a stage and a doorway to the next one. That eternity is real. Hey, church, heaven is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. This is not a joke. It's not a, it's not a game. It's not just like a cool story to read to your kids and like we get to get together and, and go, go spend money on fresh clothes and take pictures with our kids. Even that's fun and have eggs and, you know, chocolate Easter bunnies. God bless. By the way, I had a fantastic chocolate peanut butter Easter bunny. It was great. But you realize very quickly, right, this is about much more than that. And of all the whosoevers that can call on the name of the Lord, I'm glad I get to be, I get to be one of the whosoevers. Anybody glad you get, to be, you get to be one of the one? I'm a whosoever. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall experience a new life of salvation that is found in and through Christ Jesus. I am a whosoever. And if you study Scripture, particularly the life and ministry of Jesus, you find that from the prince to the pauper to the rich to the poor to the people who were in the in crowd to the people who had nothing going for them to the people who were sick to the people who were broken to the people who were lost, Jesus just opened the door for, for us all. He opened the door for us all. And of all the, the stories and ways to illustrate it, I, I think the best way to kind of bring it home is to remember when Jesus was on the cross I want to read you a story. This is in Luke chapter 22 and verse 39. I'm just going to read it to you. It says, Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, talking about blaspheming Jesus, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering, the other criminal, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God? seeing you are under the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. These guys were thieves. They're getting what they deserved. They're nailed to a cross because that's what they deserved. And that's what he's saying. But this man, talking about Jesus, has done nothing wrong. Notice this. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, can somebody just say that? Lord. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, if you can remember maybe 10, 12 minutes ago from Romans 10 and verse 9, 
where it says that if you'll believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and call on him or confess him to be Lord, you shall be saved. In this one moment, a guy who is being publicly condemned and crucified for all to see. Look, the reality is for most of us, our sin is in a back corner somewhere. You know what I mean? Most people don't know about it. Maybe your auntie or your uncle or your mama or somebody, they know about it, but it's probably not as public as this guy's sin. He is publicly condemned, convicted, and being crucified because of his sin. If anybody deserved to die that way, it was this guy, and to spend an eternity in a hell, it would be this guy. But in a moment, he cries out to Jesus, and he says, Lord. That word, Lord, means this literally, supreme in authority. He didn't say bro. <laughs> he didn't say teacher. He didn't say prophet. And there's a difference. There's a lot of people that call Jesus a lot of those things. You know, they'll put them on the cover of Time magazine and sell a million of them, and they don't, they don't mean much to you. And, or you read it, it may not mean much to you. But there's a difference between that and hey, Jesus is Lord. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, today... You'll be with me in paradise. In a moment, things changed for a guy who's busted. Like he's totally busted. He didn't have time to, he didn't have time to, to, to join church. He didn't have time to go through, go through grow classes, go to Bible school, speak in tongues, or get baptized. None of it. But just faith in Jesus. And I like all those other things. It's good. But in a moment, that's not what happened. Lord, oh, sometimes you need a few good preachers to, to confuse you. But if you, just, if you just read the Bible, you'd go, well, I can get saved right here, right now. Jesus! You are Lord! Look, in a minute, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and it's going to be filled with a lot more than just Lord. We're going to say a lot of good stuff. But the truth is, you can just call on him. I heard the story of this one man, his wife had been going to church for a long time and she'd been praying for her husband's salvation. She'd been, Lord, save my husband. The whole church kind of got together. They're praying for this man to get saved. They're praying, we want, oh man, and, and one Sunday, and he, he'd come to church, but he just, you know, just kind of sit there and he's not happy about being there. He's just there because his wife wants him there. And so he's at church and this is happening. And so, but one Sunday he's at church. He's, he's at church and he comes up to the front And three times he says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then he turns around and goes back and sits in his seat. They hadn't even done an altar call yet, y'all. This ain't proper Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, like, flow of service. We got to get this flow of service right. He don't even follow the flow of service. He's not waiting for a time to get saved. He just, he just comes up, does it. The preacher's all pumped. People are excited like, man. They're thinking, he's going to get saved today. Yeah. <laughs> so they get to the altar call, last, last part of the service, they're going to call people, you know, give people an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of their life. And I mean, that preacher's given the altar call of his life because he knows this guy's ready. Yeah. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life today, and he's like, you know, can you imagine? Anybody in the crowd? Preachers are so funny. Anyway, myself included. It's like, I know who needs to get saved today. It's you. You know, it's, uh, he's like, that's what's happening. But he didn't, he didn't raise his hand and he didn't come forward. They're like, what happened? Like, we thought he was going to get saved today. They go back there and talk to him. Like, hey, brother, you, you know, we saw God moving on you. Thought, thought you really wanted to get saved today. He said, I did get saved today. Yeah, but you didn't come forward, you know, you didn't raise your hand, like you didn't do the altar, you didn't, you didn't do any of that. He said, but I, I, well, I did come, and you heard me. I called on Jesus. He said, preacher, you said whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I did three times. 
just, just leave it to an old sinner to mess with your theology. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, but here's our card with a hundred things you need to do next. And don't get me wrong. If you stick around here, you know we believe in growth and moving forward and getting baptized. I believe in all that, okay? But the simplicity of the gospel is this. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved from your heart with faith and confidence and acknowledgement. And when you do that, when you call on the name of the Lord, Scripture actually talks about when you acknowledge Jesus publicly and you just say, hey, I believe he's Lord. It says that Jesus talks to the Father about you and goes, that's, that's one of ours now. It's unashamed. And I realize on a Sunday like today, there's probably a lot of you in here, you know, you love Jesus. You're here on Easter Sunday. Congratulations. We're glad you made it. Man, we hope you keep coming. But there may be a few of you here who you realize, you know, I've, uh, I've got my name all over this, you know. I've, I've missed it, and I, I need for Jesus to do for me what he's done for others. The scripture says in Romans 10, all the way through verse 13, right in the middle of that it says, the same Lord is rich over, uh, the, the same Lord is rich to all who call upon him. Yeah, there we go. The same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Same God who saved me is the same God who's made a way for you. I say this all the time, but I hope you realize it. It's a lot bigger than church membership. It's a lot bigger than showing up twice a year. It's so much bigger than that. It's being a part of a family, born into a kingdom with a new life. And when Jesus died on that cross, and he was buried, good news is he didn't stay there. But on the third day, after he'd paid the price and the penalty for your sin, with his blood, this, this, this is what, this is what has happened to your sin. As permanent as this looks. Come on, anybody ever got Sharpie on anything? It's like it's over, throw it away, right? As permanent as this looks, there's nothing that can do what Jesus has done to erase what you have done. And I'm telling you, to believe otherwise is to believe your sin is greater than the blood of Jesus, and it's just not. It's just not. And when you stand in this place saved because of what Jesus has done, you can have confidence, fellowship, communion with the God who created you and running a race that God's called you to run with purpose. Things are different. Things are so much different when you know that you know, man, I've been saved. People ask you what, what you've been saved from. Say, you know, it's a really long list and I really don't want to get into it, but I've made a lot of mistakes, but Jesus made a way for me. That's it. That's I'm not who I used to be anymore. I mean, I may have the same social security number. You know what I'm saying? I may, you know, may sell some of the same things I like. I may, may still be a little bit, you know, got same personality, stuff like that. But I mean, the reality is this, I've been, I've been washed. I've been clean. I've been made righteous. I've been made pure. I've been made holy. I've been made new. And I am not who I used to be any longer. Amen. Same Lord over this guy right here. This guy, Aaron Hankins. Oh, hit myself in the head. Right there is the same Lord over Cam and Alicia. I think I said that right. Over Sissy, over Karen, over Peyton. I can't read y'all's names. Y'all need to write better. Over Caleb. <laughs> Lydia, Sandra, looks like Samantha to me, Carolyn, right? I like this. This just says a multi family. <laughs> yeah. He's Lord over the whole family. 
with the whole crew. Woo!